The Geneva Motor Show is one of the most important in Europe. Visitors are drawn to the event for a first glimpse of new concept cars and of models that will soon be on sale to the public. Of course, green cars are high on the agenda again this year, with energy efficiency of high interest. That's certainly one of the big selling points for Audi's new third-generation A3. It's based on the Volkswagen Group's modular component system. The same parts are used in a number of different models across the various VW brands. That includes Skoda and Seat, as well as Audi. That means significant savings. And the new A3 is lighter, too. Fuel efficiency is up by around 10%. Audi's CEO, Rupert Stadler, says the new model is around 80 kilos lighter than its predecessor. He says that makes the car more agile and more efficient. He says the 1.6 TDI goes 100 kilometers on 3.8 liters. That's 99 grams of CO2 per 100 kilometers. Porsche is unveiling a new model, too. It's the world premiere of the new Boxster generation. Again, fuel efficiency is a major feature. It's significantly lighter thanks to lightweight construction and a redesigned chassis. Porsche says that's improved the Boxster's looks and the driving experience, as well as improving efficiency by around 15% compared to earlier models. Porsche's Wolfgang Hatz says while the engine in the Boxster S remains at 3.4 liters, it's been improved, boosting performance and reducing fuel consumption. And the entry-level model has had its engine size reduced from 2.9 to 2.7 liters. That means huge efficiency savings, according to the company. Porsche says the new entry-level Boxster now achieves average fuel efficiency of 7.7 .7 liters per 100 kilometers. Mercedes is very proud of its new baby, the new A-Class. The revamped compact has undergone some major changes, and again fuel efficiency is a key factor. Mercedes-Benz is head of sales and marketing says the company is hoping to use the new model to win over new customers. He says the main draw will be the design, something the company is very proud of. But the car also has plenty of new features. Mercedes has given the new A-Class safety standard features that used to be found only in their more expensive models. And it's hoping to win over younger buyers with its internet connectivity. The new model has full iPhone integration, giving the driver access at all times to their phone's content. Hyundai's at the Geneva Motor Show too. They're presenting an estate version of their i30 hatchback. The i30 CW has the advantage of much more storage space. The trunks increase to 535 liters, plenty of space to pack away bags and suitcases. Chevrolet is presenting a new model for Europe. It's the world premiere of its new cruise station wagon, and it has a new entertainment and information system. They're calling it Chevrolet My Link. It lets drivers integrate their own devices into the vehicle, and a high-resolution touchscreen provides direct access to music and video. And there's another world premiere at Geneva this year, the Ford Kuga. It's bigger than its predecessor and will be sold all over the world. Ford calls this its One Ford Strategy. It's planning to launch the Kuga in Europe at the start of next year. Volkswagen's unveiled something new, a Golf that's a GTI and a convertible. As well as the open top, it's got some of the classic GTI features. A red frame front grille, the GTI logo, and the GTI bumper at the front. Inside the car, the convertible has the same features as the hardtop version. Only the windscreen frame and the special back seats are different. Seat's presenting its new Toledo. They're calling it a concept, but it's almost ready for production. It's almost the shape of a sports car, but it also has the full five doors. Jaguar's got a new offering, too. It's a station wagon version of its XF series. It's called the Sports Brake. It's based on the station wagon, but from the B-pillar back, the shape's different, 
with a higher roof line. Black D pillars give the impression of all-round glass. Land Rover is showing off a new concept, a convertible SUV. The Evoque has a fully retractable soft top and there's rollover protection. Land Rover says there are no plans yet to put it into production. The idea is to see what kind of response it gets at the show. Bentley's been raising eyebrows with an SUV too. It's a luxury one, of course. The EXP9F has a 6-liter 12-cylinder engine, giving it 449 kilowatts and 800 newton meters of torque. The inside has typical Bentley luxury features, fine materials, and the latest entertainment systems. Does the world need a luxury SUV? It's sure to be controversial, but could well go into production. It's not obvious at first glance, but this 5 Series BMW is a milestone. Since 1972, the BMW M Company has been tuning models made by the Bavarian manufacturer. Now the engineers have started a new chapter, turning their customizing attention for the first time to a diesel model. Also new in the 40 years of company history is a 5 Series automobile with all-wheel drive. Friedrich Nitschke, the president of BMW M, points out that the customized M vehicles have special requirements, and that, until a few years or even months ago, it was inconceivable that these needs could be met with a diesel aggregate and all-wheel drive. But progress has made it possible. Technology has developed further. With the new motor, BMW M has a package with outstanding driving performance, low fuel consumption, and a technology using three turbos in standard six-cylinder engines. Friedrich Nitschke says no company in the world can copy it today. This is the heart of the new M550D X-Drive. The motor generates 280 kilowatts and already reaches its maximum torque at 2,000 RPM. Nikolai Ardai, head of development at BMW M, says that this motor provides driving performance in a sports car that the competition can achieve only with a 12-cylinder engine. This car has eight cylinders. No competitor's eight-cylinder car can match its output. With its serially produced eight-gear automatic shift, the 5 Series sedan accelerates from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 4.7 seconds. The car's electronics prevent it from accelerating beyond 250 kilometers an hour. BMW says it's possible to take the car 100 kilometers on 6.3 liters. A more realistic estimate would add three to that, but that's still not bad considering the car's performance. How does the motor function in detail? The head of development shows us the two-step charging unit with three turbochargers. The large charger underneath is a low-pressure step, and two smaller chargers provide the high-pressure step. Some competing models and also other BMWs have two-step charging systems, but they all have only two chargers, one low-pressure charger and one high-pressure charger. The high-pressure charger here is set up to start very quickly because its inertia is low. That means the car accelerates fast. Above a certain RPM and load, a conventional two-charger system has to be shifted away to avoid over-revving. But instead, the BMW M550D X-Drive has a second small high-pressure charger, so that the two high-pressure chargers can continue operation up to the maximum RPM. Nikolai Ardai compares this to having a second passing lane on the Autobahn. So the BMW M550D X-Drive is a wolf in sheep's clothing. But there are other hints at the motor's high performance. The huge air intakes in the skirt, for example. The M on the rear end indicates that this 5 Series car is customized. So do the two trapezoid exhaust pipes. The three characteristic colored stripes in the interior also give away that this is an M car, or customized. 
the BMW M Company has always customized more than just the motor. The M cars have always placed emphasis on overall harmony. A powerful motor requires that all the other components and systems in the vehicle have to be adjusted to work well with this high-performing engine. Brakes, chassis, and axle shock systems are all designed for overall sporty harmony. Company president Friedrich Nitschke is proud that this has characterized M cars in the past, and he's determined to maintain that standard in the future. M auch in der Vergangenheit ausmacht und die wir auch in der Zukunft so extrem verteidigen werden. Up to now, the 5 Series diesel sedans were known for their long distance advantages, but the M 550D X Drive adds a new dimension: sportiness. The Fiat Panda is one of the real classics in the compact segment. In 32 years, more than 6.5 million of them have been sold. Now the Italian company is putting the third generation of the Panda on the road. New for the Panda is the 62 kilowatt twin air turbo motor with two cylinders. This summer, a natural gas powered variant will also be released. BMW is expanding its motorcycle segment with the BMW C650 GT. It has a newly developed two-cylinder 44-kilowatt inline motor that accelerates the 261-kilo vehicle from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in just 7.5 seconds. Visually, the Maxi scooter takes up the typical form of a BMW motorcycle and is suitable for long-distance rides. Today we compare two compact cars, the Renault Clio from France and the Korean Kia Rio. Let's start with the Renault. Introduced in 1990, it's in its third generation and received a facelift in mid-2009 to make it fit the current Renault design line. It's available in many variations, including three and five-door versions and a selection of five gasoline and three diesel motors between 55 and 148 kilowatts. We're testing the TomTom -tom version of the Clio with a 76 kilowatt power train. The Kia Rio has been available in Germany in its third generation since the year 2000. The new Rio model came onto the market in 2011, and so it looks more dynamic than its French competitor. Where the Kia looks aggressive, the Renault looks friendly. The Kia's appearance is a creation of designer Peter Schreier, who switched from VW to Kia in 2006. He is the man behind Kia's new styling. The tail lights are divided in the Kia Rio. The Clio has a single bank of lights in the rear. The Rio has a sloping hatchback for better use of space. The Renault has a vertical hatchback. The Renault's interior is a plastic landscape. Some better materials are also used, but overall the quality and design leave something to be desired. The stubby controls seem odd. The GPS system has an SD card memory, but its remote control operation is unwieldy. The interior of the Kia is typically Asian, lots of buttons, but the design is more attractive and the materials are better crafted. And the controls have a sportier, zestier feel than in the Clio. We're testing the Rio in the Spirit variant with a 1.4-liter gasoline engine. With 80 kilowatts of power, it accelerates from 0 to 100 in 11.5 seconds. The manufacturer's specs say it uses 10% less fuel than the Clio, but price counts too, and the new Rio costs 1,700 euros more than the Clio. But the Rio has the advantage in the driving experience. The steering responds well and conveys a pleasant, sporty contact with the road. In that respect, the Renault can't keep up. 
It's typically French loose steering isn't as much fun as with the Korean car. And ultimately, that's what cost it the victory in our test. The Korean Challenger beats the French car. It has a fresher design and is more fun to drive. In some, more automobile for the money. There are lots of kinds of trucks built by different manufacturers for different situations. Germany's premium brand Mercedes-Benz has been making a broad palette of commercial vehicles for decades. Most of the vehicles are two-wheel drive, which is sufficient for most needs, but not for all terrain. That's why Mercedes-Benz offers customers the option of four-wheel drive for each of their models, from the Sprinter to the Viana. Johann Rempler is an engineer for vehicle dynamics. He says there are some situations where two-wheel drive is inadequate. One example of why the automaker builds all-wheel drive models is so that the trucks can be used on construction sites or slippery roads. Depending on the model, all-wheel drive is offered in different forms. On the Sprinter, it can be manually activated. The extra traction can be had for about 13,000 euros for vehicles sold in Germany. The optional reduction gear setting can be had for another 600 euros. So it's not just a snazzy feature that comes cheap. Customers invest in the option if they plan to use the truck in rough terrain, like quarries. After all, drivers don't want to have to get towed out. Other models, like the Viano, can be ordered with permanent all-wheel drive. Our engineer Johann Rempler says there are about six different ways of getting engine power to all of the wheels. He says there's the standard real wheel drive or front wheel drive that can be shifted into all wheel drive mode. Then there's viscous coupling, multi plate clutch locking, automatic coupling that responds to oil pressure and activates the inter axle and inter wheel differential locks. There's also dry coupling and then the torsion differential. Es gibt trockene Kupplungen, die dafür vorgesehen sind, damit man es gibt das torsion differential, das sind so die sechs Konzepte. So those are the six forms that exist for all-wheel drive. Rempler says Mercedes favors permanent all-wheel drive. That way all four wheels transfer power simultaneously. They provide more lateral support for better handling. That makes the vehicle more drivable and safer. Safety has the highest priority controllable driving, and the engineer says that's the most important thing in Mercedes. Now we went to see whether the Viano lives up to the manufacturer's promise on the test track. On a wet surface, the vehicle sticks to its tracks and stays under control at all times. So here, the all-wheel drive is a definite safety advantage. Our engineer explains that the engine's power is distributed by a power divider and a differential, and that's the important part. Mercedes has three open differentials in its system. There's rear-wheel drive with the rear axle's open differential, front-wheel drive, and then the formatic system, which gives power to all four wheels. In some situations, like driving in rugged terrain, drivers need differential locks to prevent wheel spin due to varying traction. Mercedes doesn't use mechanical locks. Instead, it relies on electronics to respond to the problem. Uh, once again, our engineer explains that the advantages of three open differentials is that the traction control system for ETS can activate three differential locks. You can activate the inter-axle lock by building up pressure on both sides of the rear axle and thereby transfer traction to the front axle, or the other way around. 
And then there's the interwheel differential lock by activating a pressure buildup on each axle. Mercedes-Benz offers all-wheel drive on all of its commercial vehicles with a total weight capacity of seven and a half tons. The Sprinter with a maximum vehicle weight of five tons can carry a load of up to 3,000 kilograms. Anyone who plans to transport a heavier load needs to turn to Mercedes' Vario model, which also has optional permanent all-wheel drive. But the traction control comes at a price. It costs just under 20,000 euros for vehicles sold in Germany. All-wheel drive is a useful safety feature for heavy-use vehicles, but with such a hefty price tag, buyers will want to carefully consider whether they really need it. This 1956 Volkswagen Beetle may look harmless, but appearances can be deceptive. Underneath the familiar curves, this vehicle's been tuned up to create something very special. It's the work of this man, Gerd Weiser. He calls the car a wolf in sheep's clothing. Seeing it on the road, one wouldn't notice anything special, but a lot of work's gone into it to make it what it is. He says it started as a hobby and somehow turned into a job. He makes a living from upgrading old Volkswagens. He's a particular fan of Beetles, so simple that easy to come by spare parts can turn them into new sporty versions of their old selves. And the four-cylinder boxer engines are quick to remove, making life easier for mechanics. That's a particular advantage when it comes to racing. The Beetle's a popular choice for motorsports. Gerd explains that well-known teams used the Beetle for major races and rallies and often came out on time. He doesn't change much on the exterior of the vehicles, Gerd says. From outside, there's still the Beetles people know and love. Inside, there are more comfortable seats, but they've covered in the original material to keep the look. It's on the racetrack that the souped-up Beetle really shows what it can do. It handles the curves beautifully. Garrett's 1,200 hours of work have clearly paid off. Visor has kept the original Beetle engine block, but he's added a Porsche fan for better cooling and to allow higher revs for longer. And he's fitted a central air filter. He says that keeps noise inside the car to a minimum and makes for a more pleasant experience on long journeys. But all the rest is original Beetle mechanics, Gerd says. He's used Weber dual carburetors. He says that's normal for Beetles. And the exhausts have been chosen from the extensive range of Beetle tuning parts available on the market. The Beetle engine's been upgraded to 2.2 liters, giving it almost 165 horsepower. It can go from 0 to 100 kilometers in just 5.8 seconds. And Gerd explains there have been some major changes to the vehicle's chassis. The suspension has been replaced, and there have also been changes to the brakes and the axles. That makes it possible to indulge in some very aggressive driving. The Beetle's performance on the track shows that despite its humble appearance, it can punch well above its weight. Some Beetle fans might have mixed feelings about it if they value authenticity over performance. But we say good luck to Gat and his very special car. <laughs>